Welcome, listener. You've stumbled upon the unexpected podcast. Whether you're meant to be here or not, you might want to prepare yourself for a world of stories you won't hear anywhere else. They are, after all, quite unexpected. Smelling! One of the five senses! Some say it's the most deadly one, because smells conjure up old, unwanted feelings. Perhaps the scent of gasoline brings forth the memory of a road trip with a friend. Incense may produce a recollection of an old family gathering. Or a waft of bodily fluids may make one think of an old lover. But... Who among us hasn't smelled something that shook us to our very core? And as our next poor souls are about to find out, sometimes smells carry a price tag of their own. One that can only be paid in blood. I bring to you now the horrifyingly pungent tale of The Haunting of Smell House. Sure is a great day for driving, isn't it? Yeah, sure is. We should be there any minute now. I can't wait. Uh Uh-huh. Me too. Gee whiz, can you believe it? Out of all the people at our college, the two of us were chosen by Dr. Flarp to spend the night at the old Smell Mansion. That family has such a rich history. Timothy Smell basically built the entire town himself. Though if you can recall, there's a dark side to it all, too. There's even rumors that the old place is haunted by Timothy's daughter, Gertrude. Wow, we sure are lucky, aren't we? Yep. It's been a long drive, though. Almost two entire days of just you and me in this car. Without even a radio to listen to, since it's, you know, broken. (laughs) And we've been switching off at night because we don't have the money to stay at a motel, you know, because we're college students. (laughs) But soon we'll have some serious cash because we are each getting 10,000 bucks to stay a single night there. That will help a lot because my family was really poor growing up and I'm no longer in contact with any of them. Mm. <sighs> Sorry, just a little anxious about all this. As you know, smoking helps calm me down a bit. <sighs> anyway, you know what I think? I think all of this travel will be worth it. Come tomorrow morning, we'll get all that money and drive on back to school. Ellie? Yeah, Veronica? Would you just shut the hell up already? Huh? Why? Because we went over all of this two days ago, in detail. We got the same email from Dr. Florp about visiting here. We're both fully 100% aware of what's going on. We talked about all of it as soon as we got in the car, so why would you bring it up 30 seconds before we arrive? Oh, sorry. Hey, isn't that the house? Thank God. Wow! Would you just look at it? I've never seen such a big house in my entire life. You're right. It's even bigger than I imagined. So old, so beautiful. It's almost hypnotic. And yet, something seems off about it. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's that window that's a little out of place from the others? Or quite possibly it's that eerie voice I hear in the wind. No, it's something else. Not a thing I can see with my eyes or hear with my ears. It's more like a bad smell. Hey, girls. Oh, hi. You must be the other student staying with us tonight, right? Yeah, kind of. Uh, Hey, I'm Jack. Jack Smell. 
My aunt owned this place. Dr. Flarp reached out to me to see if I'd like to finally explore it with you guys. I guess it has quite the history. Wow. Your aunt was Gertrude? What was she like? To be honest, I really don't know much about her. We used to come here all the time when I was young, but then... Something happened with the family. I'm not sure exactly what. Suddenly, Aunt Gertrude wasn't very outgoing. She just stayed home and kept to herself. My parents didn't want to visit after a while, you know, because of the odd smells that never seemed to leave. So I'm not crazy. There is something about the smell here. Not like an old person's smell or the scent of flowers in a meadow. It's something else. Something I haven't smelled since I was a child. Yes, though I'm not quite sure what it is. It's been here for decades. Seems to have only gotten worse after my aunt died. It's the darndest thing, isn't it? (laughs) Well, looks like the sun is setting. Hey, let me help you bring those bags in. I think Dr. Flarp is finishing up a few things with the maid. Yes, uh, yes, I understand. Like I uh, said, uh, we'll make sure to uh, stay out of the basement. Well, you'd better. Believe me. (laughs) You don't want to be messing around down there. Somebody could get hurt. Yes, hurt real bad. Hurt? Hurt doing what? Oh, hello. Welcome, welcome. Ellie, Veronica, and Jack. I see you have all arrived in one piece. It's a shame they won't be leaving that way. Excuse me? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. (laughs) Let me just finish making your pudding for the evening, and then I'll get out of your hair. Can't stand to be here when the sun goes down. Splendid. Splendid indeed. I imagine the four of us will be just fine. While the place is quite big and ominous... It's actually kind of cozy, don't you think? That's not the word I would use, not with these smells. Come now, we can discuss that later. Let's have dinner and get to know each other a little better, shall we? So, we didn't have the money to stay in a motel, you know, because we're college students. And also, my family was really poor growing up, and I'm no longer in contact with any of them. Yes, I see, I see. Though, if you can recall, we went over that months ago, during the initial interview process and subsequent phone calls. I'm fully 100% aware of your background. Uh, say, uh, Veronica, I see you haven't touched your dinner. Is everything okay? I'm sorry, Professor Flarp. I'm just not comfortable with eating here. Why is that? Is the duck a la mustard not up to your standards? No, it's this house. It has a distinct odor to it. It's not the smell of potpourri in a jar or even the wax of a pine-scented candle. It's something different. Something that, if I really think about it, unsettles me to my very soul. Yes, it certainly is distinct, isn't it? Like, unnaturally distinct. It somehow smells just like my seventh grade teacher, Mr. Buschetti's homeroom class. It always had a hint of bananas. I'm sorry, but it doesn't smell anything like that, Veronica. It's actually... Pudding time! Oh, oh, you startled me. Oh, I, uh, I didn't know you were still here. Ah, uh, why, well, yes, I'd, I'd love some of your pudding. And perhaps, if Veronica isn't in the mood, I'll have hers too. <laughs> Go right ahead, Professor. Ah, lovely. Just lovely. <clears throat> pudding. Well, I best be leaving now. Like I said, can't stand anywhere near this place at night. I'll stop back in the morning and clean up the dishes. Hopefully just dishes this time. And no decapitated heads. Yikes. What did she mean by that? Oh, surely that's typical maid humor. I had a lover who was the same way. Now, 
back to this pudding. So, Professor, I, I have to ask, are the stories really true? Did Gertrude Smell really kill someone in every room of this house? <coughs> Damn it, Ellie! I'm eating pudding! Have you no decency? No manners? No common sense whatsoever! Yeah, Ellie, that's my aunt you're talking about. It really hurts my feelings that you would just blurt that out at dinner. Especially during dessert. Show a little respect, huh? Uh, I'm sorry. That was entirely inappropriate, Ellie. I simply don't think I'm in the mood to carry on with the rest of the evening now. I declare the night officially and irrevocably ruined. We should all go to bed. Yeah, I think so too. Ugh. Good night, everyone. Thanks for ruining pudding time, Ellie. Veronica, are you sure you don't mind that we're staying in the same room tonight? Actually, yeah. I do. Quite a bit. There's 47 different rooms in this place. Why do you have to stay in this one? And can you stop smoking? There's already so many bad smells here. But I don't want to sleep anywhere else, Veronica. I'm scared. What? Why? It's just an old house. Yeah, an old house where Gertrude Smell murdered 47 different people. This again? Ellie, please. Professor Flarp and Jack were right. You're being very disrespectful. There's a time and a place to discuss the house's mysterious and murder-filled past, and it's not now. Besides, that old bat is dead and rotting in a grave somewhere. She can't hurt anyone anymore. I know, but when I went to the bathroom a few minutes ago, I smelled something I hadn't smelled in years, and I don't want to be alone. What? You did? So did I. I've been smelling it since I got here. What did you smell? It was the smell of this old candy store my parents used to take me to every Sunday as a kid. It was such a nice, sweet place. It smelled like bubblegum and cinnamon rolls. It always made me so happy. But then it burned down. Almost 15 years ago now. And Mr. Whitchurch, the man who owned it, was inside. He burned to death. I hadn't thought of that place in forever. That's so weird. Because I smell my old high school locker room. I used to be on the swim team growing up. It was my passion. But the other girls bullied me. They waited until after practice and called me names like Knucklehead, Butt Brain, and F*** Dishwasher. Sometimes our coach, Mrs. Nakamas, would step in and make them stop until the school burned down. She was trapped inside and she burned to death. This is too creepy. Maybe... Maybe the money isn't worth it. I really don't want to spend the night in here. Who knows what could happen? Yeah, I smelled something, too. Ah! Jack, you creep! Why are you hiding under our bed? I don't know. I thought you might make out or something. But I feel like I'm starting to lose my mind. I'm smelling things I thought I'd never smell again. Like what? If I'm being honest... This entire room smells like my Uncle Clem one night after he got out of the shower. Then the bathroom started on fire shortly afterwards and he burned to death. What? Oh my god, it's Aunt Gertrude! She's come back from the dead to kill us all! Oh, <laughs> oh no, no, Jack. It's only me, Professor Flarp, just checking in to make sure everything is okay. To be honest, we're kind of... Spooked. Money or no money, I don't think any of us want to stay the night here. Well, the choice is yours. Of course, if you left, you'd forfeit the $10,000 I promised you. Professor Flarp, can I ask a question? Why is it that you're paying us so much money to stay here? You're not asking us to investigate anything. You're not an eccentric billionaire throwing a party. Is it because you just have some weird interest in an old woman who murdered people in every room of this house, and you're scared to look into it alone? Why, yes, Ellie. You've cracked the code, I'm afraid. The first time I visited here, I encountered so many different scents from my past. 
the nights I spent as a student in Paris. The aroma from when I first went camping on my own in the mountains. The whiff of a male lover I'd taken on in my younger days, stepping out of the shower. I knew I needed to spend more time here, figure out the mystery of Smell House. But I couldn't do it alone. Not with so many smells assaulting me all at once from different parts of the house. All with... Oh, <coughs> oh, oh my. W oh, wait a moment. Oh, here comes one of those smells now. Is it... Or could it be? Oh my god. The Unexpected Storytelling Podcast will return after a short word from our sponsors. Okay, Darren, I'll give you that raise that you've been asking for for five years. Wait, what is that smell? Why, yes, Darren, I will marry you. Oh, what is that smell? Uh, hey, Darren, uh, it smells real bad in here, and I think it's your grandma. She's dead on the ground, and she's probably been that way for like a month. Ugh, are you tired of losing job promotions and loved ones due to the way your house smells? If so, please call Tony's Stink Stop Shop, right? We can get rid of everything, uh, pet smells, uh, pickle smells, uh, rotting corpses, whatever, you know? You smelled it, we've cleaned it. Don't settle for a stinky house no more. Call us at Tony's Stink Stop Shop and we'll have your house smelling like new. And if not, uh, we'll give you a free bath, huh? I mean, technically it's not legal, it's just a thing I like to do on the side. Uh, don't judge me, it's none of your business, all right? You want a free bath, you want a clean house, whatever, call Tony's Stink Stop Shop now. Buzz off, all right? Just go away. We now return you to your tale here on The Unexpected Podcast. What on earth is that smell? It's not only a sinister smell, I'm afraid. It's a sound. Someone's coming for this door. You don't think it's the maid, do you? Come back to scare us? I'm... I'm not sure. Hello? Uh, who, who's there? <gasps> Everyone shut up. Maybe the killer ghost won't know we're here. That smell... It's all around us. It's awful. We gotta do something. Jack, no. You don't know what's out there. <laughs> oh my god. It's her. Come on, she's getting away. Don't leave us here. And quickly, girls. We can't let Gertrude kill another. Not many know this, but there's actually a 48th room in this house. And it's in the basement. We must stop her. But, Professor, she could be luring us all into a trap. We know she's cunning. How else do you think she's murdered everyone in all the other rooms? Ellie, by God, would you just drop it already? That's a risk we're going to have to take. Shouldn't we at least grab some knives from the kitchen, a, a couple of mallets from the closet, or one of those loaded guns over there? No. There's no time. Quickly. I don't see her, and it's so dark down here. Ugh. The smell. Ugh. It's stronger than ever. Where are you guys? I can barely see you. Gertrude could be hiding around any corner, ready to murder us all one by one. In fact, she could be behind any of us right this very second, just waiting to strike. Slit our throats and watch us gleefully as we bleed out and die in utter agony. Oh, I don't want to die. Would you shut up? My God, I've never met someone so. <gasps> oh my God. What is it? Look, she's on the ground, face down, with a knife in her back. She must have stabbed herself before we could beat her to death. A fitting end. Well, that ends that. Let's go back upstairs, uh, go to bed, and just get a good night's rest. Wait a second. That's not Gertrude. Hold on. You may be right. A woman in an apron. With dark hair. Deeply woeful eyes. 
a maid's uniform with a pudding stain. Hmm, I wonder. <gasps> it's the maid! No, no, it can't be. Gertrude, you monster. You shouldn't have done this. Oh no, the door at the top of the steps closed. We're trapped! And we're in complete darkness. I can't see my hand in front of my face. And the worst part of all is, there's a killer down here. With us. Or maybe, the worst part is, the smell that's suddenly all around us again. Inside us. Beckoning us. Wait. Ellie, what's your greatest fear? Huh? Oh, uh, I don't know. Probably being bullied after what I suffered through Jack, with... quickly. What's yours? I guess I'd say it's the growing shadow of my Uncle Clem as he walked down the hallway to my bedroom and... Mine is bananas! Don't you all see? We're all smelling our worst fears. Just like each one of those poor souls in the 47 rooms did right before they met their demise. I don't know about you guys... But this is all getting to be just a little too... spooky for me. Wait. Professor Flarp, how do you know about all the victims smelling their fears? That wasn't in any of the research you shared with us. How did I know? Oh, Ellie. (laughs) Poor, poor Ellie. (laughs) What a silly question. Of course I know. Because Gertrude's smell is my sister, and I was there when she murdered everyone. What? But why, Professor Flarp? Why didn't you tell us? Well, you see, this was not just Gertrude's house. It was my house, too, for a time. Our father's will stipulated the first to marry shall own it outright. But... No one could love Gertrude, for she never bathed in... Well, she smelled like leftover cabbage in a shed. Well, unlike my sister, I found true love. Clem moved in, and Gertrude was forcibly removed by the police. Unfortunately, she couldn't accept it. One night, as Clem and I were hosting a dinner party with friends and colleagues, she... Well... She returned and murdered the guests, one by one. One for each room of the house, so she could ruin it and tarnish it forever. The mansion was overflowing with blood. There were body parts everywhere. Except one last place. A secret room, where she would kill her final victim. You knew all of this and you brought us here, put us in danger, after she killed all your friends and your lover? Oh, I never said she killed Clem. Well, at least not until tonight. What? Where is he? Where's his body? Why, it's on the floor, before you. You see? Clem was spared by Gertrude, so long as I left the house and allowed him to become her personal maid. Yet I found myself powerless to get him back after my sister died. Gertrude's spirit wouldn't allow him to leave. At least not until after her and I worked out a deal. I would bring someone to take his place to be murdered in the final 48th room. But now it seems she, well, broke our little agreement. Wait a moment. So Clem, my Uncle Clem... He was called that because he was your lover. You're the uncle everyone in our family talked about? That's right, nephew. Flop happens to be my first name, not my last. One final cruel joke played on me by my mother before she died in childbirth. Perhaps her death is another reason Gertrude resents me. So if Uncle Clem was alive all this time as a maid... Well, that means he... Faked his death in a bathroom fire? Ah, yes. Another cruel act orchestrated by Gertrude in order to cover her tracks. Now show yourself, sister. Oh no. It smells like old cabbage in a shed. She's making her presence known. 
it keeps getting stronger and it's so thick it almost feels like it's morphing into something else something solid something deadly ah! Ah! you mad woman you broke our deal. And what are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to stop you from murdering anyone else. Oh, yeah, brother? Take a whiff of this. No. No, it's overpowering. Yeah, It's almost like... Clem's dirty socks. Run, children. Run. And please, <coughs> forgive me. Oh. Let's get out of here. But the door is locked. We're trapped. Wait. Hold on a second. I remember a secret room from when I was a kid. Come on. Let's go. We just have to turn this candlestick. <laughs> That's it. Shut the door. It looks airtight. She can't get in. I think we're safe. Oh no. It's seeping in under the door. <laughs> it's so thick. I can't breathe. <laughs> I'm losing my strength. I I'm not going to make it. Ellie. <laughs> I just want to say I'm sorry. to take this trip with you. And now, this house is all mine. (coughs) Gertrude, it's me, your nephew, Jack. You won't kill me, will you? Actually, yes. Yes, I will. (coughs) Ah, little Ellie. It's just you and me now. My last kill. I'm going to enjoy this. I've saved my worst smell of all for you. It's sure to be slow and painful. I don't think so. Oh yeah? How are you going to stop me? With this! A match? What are you going to do with that? Smoke me out? Brace yourself, Gertrude, because I got one more smell for you.
you'll want to stay out in the basement, or Gertrude might put a smell on you. <laughs> Doors to smell house are open wide. Won't you dare to step inside? That's only a smell from your past. The house is settling, it will not last. Or is it a smell you've never known? That's beginning to chill you to your bones. you hear on the unexpected consider sharing our show with family and friends along with any strangers you come across provide a little something unexpected to someone else's day you can find and subscribe to our show on itunes google play or anywhere else you stream your podcasts we're on social media on unexpected show on twitter and the unexpected podcast on facebook you can also find out what we're up to on our website www.theunexpectedpodcast.com Thank you for listening. Now let's get back to our bone-chilling tale. Well, that sure was a real gasser. It certainly brought the house down, did it not? I had a strong sense that everything wasn't going to end up well for our heroes. If only they had paid more attention and didn't have their noses in the air, they could have smelled a rat in their own midst. Oh, well, I hate to keep rubbing their noses in it, since they no longer have one. But before I leave you for this latest tale, remember as the old saying goes, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. But a burning corpse will always smell like a burning corpse. Oh, what is that smell? Oh, that's just me. Never mind. The Unexpected Storytelling Podcast is written, produced, and directed by Andrew Socek and Eric Bergstrom. Each story is somehow a work of fiction, and with the exception of public figures like Tony Danza, any resemblance to persons living or dead is coincidental and unexpected.